Well, our moms think we're funny. So, what else do we have here? Of oh. course, Rorschach talks about how he was too soft on the criminals. This thing, this line right here, I think, is interesting. Um, because I say, like I say, soft. Hadn't realized the stakes we were playing for back then. All of us, me, all my friends, soft. And he goes, you have friends? He goes, Kovacs had friends. Other men in costumes, all Kovacs ever was, was a man in costume. Not Rorschach, not Rorschach at all. So it's yeah. like, even even then, when he was originally part of the Watchmen of the Crime Busters, mm-hmm. uh, um, that he was still Kovacs. And Kovacs had friends, Rorschach doesn't. Mm-hmm. And but I think he does realize though yeah, that um, Rorschach does have a friend. Like, like Dan is not Kovacs's friend. Dan is Rorschach's friend. Yep, yep. So yeah, he talks about how he admires the comedian's worldview. He does talk about how he was too soft on the criminals because we because he left him alive. Right. And <laughs> on page sixteen, the doctor finishes the second bottle of stomach pills. <laughs> So this is interesting. He goes, um, he goes, understood man's capacity for horrors, but never uh, quit. Saw the world's black underbelly and never surrendered. Once a man is seen, he can never turn his back on it, never pretend it doesn't exist, yeah. no matter who orders him to look the other way. Which is what happened with the comedian. Right. Well, he's talking about the comedian there. It's like, uh, it's like, and that's kind of the same thing with him. It's like, you can't, like, once you see it, if you know it exists out there mm-hmm. and you don't do anything to stop it, then it's like how how can you? It's like right. If if once you once you know it's out there, it's out there. You have to in his in his mind, you have to do something to stop it. Right? Yeah, <clears throat> we do it because we are compelled. Um, and so uh, you know, so at this point, he's he's out there. He's being Rorschach. Um, and he's you know trying to fight. And, and I like how he says, um, you know, going back, he says, you know, uh, then I was just Rorschach. I mean, Kovacs, Kovacs pretending to be Rorschach. It was like. He he looks at this thing. He says, "You know, there's a like I was putting on the putting on the mask. Um, mm-hmm. it's, it's almost like a like Friday Thirteenth Part Five. You know, the the one was just like I'm putting on the mask. I'm pretending to be Jason and everything, and I'm I'm doing everything that what I think Jason would do. Right. But I'm not Jason. It's right. like yeah. It's like here there's there's a there's a a whole nother level to being him right. that you're right. completely incapable." Of reaching. Right. You have boundaries that he doesn't. Uh, I do think it's interesting, <clears throat> top of page 17, he just calls him Rorschach. Not not even in the journal, he just says, hello Rorschach, how are you today? Right. It's like, he's he's just given up at that point. It's like, at, this, at that stage, he knows that it's like, I'm nowhere near as far into making progress as I thought. Yeah, this is interesting, is when he shows him the picture, um, and he goes, a dog, dog with his head split in half, and he goes, I see. He goes, uh, and, uh, what do you think split the uh, split the dog's head in half? It's that line right there. It, so if you look at it and you say, okay, um, I see a dog with his head split in half, right? And you're like, okay, that's interesting. But he knows there's a story to it. Yep. And that's what scares. That's why he starts stuttering. It's like, oh, shit, there's a story to this. <laughs> <laughs> well, we've talked about it. It's like, you got to, you know, a lot of people, you don't cross the line and kill animals. It's like you don't you don't want to see the dogs die in the horror movies. I could see a million people get slaughtered by Jason, and I don't care. But that time he kills the dog, it's like, oh fuck, dude, <laughs> you're an asshole. <laughs> I mean, yeah, those counselors had it coming, but that was just a dog. And it's like to to know that Rorschach is willing to go there and like, yeah, I, I killed the dog. <laughs> <laughs> what are you gonna do about it? Are you gonna tell me I was wrong? Because I'll be happy to have that conversation. <laughs> yeah, because I mean, to to be perfectly honest, I mean. That the, the, those dogs were going to have to be put down. Oh I yeah. Mean, you, yeah, they were going to have to be put down. Um, so yeah, that that's just the way that had to go. Um, but uh, it's that's. I like how once he starts telling the story, um, there's no there's no words. Mm-hmm. You know, so once he starts telling the story, and it's like there's no words to it. Yeah, yeah, just a really nice touch. Mm. And. For the for the the mask to be just completely random, mm-hmm. that panel with the realization on his face when he's looking at the dog and it's you know, fighting over the bone. Yep. And there's that realization on the mask. It's like it, that's that that's pretty cool. Yeah, um, yeah. Props to Dave Gibbons for that because that is like it's really subtle. The first time I ever read through the book, I didn't realize that the mask was even changing. 
Mm-hmm. And then, like, second time through, I was like, oh, shit, it, it's actually his facial expressions. And, yeah, that panel is, like, beautiful of just, like, you can really read there of just, like, the, oh, my God, that's what happened. I like that. It was uh, when he says here, you know, when he when he kills the dogs, um, it was uh, Kovacs who said, mother, then uh, muffled under latex. It was Kovacs who closed his eyes. It was Rorschach who opened them again. Yep. It's I, I like that. It's like at that point he was like, and so we're we're talking about this this story, and I think we talked about it once. Uh, we kind of told about the story already, but mm-hmm. it's uh, a guy he kidnapped this little girl um, because she was the granddaughter of uh, of a wealthy man. He thought she was, but they had the name wrong. Right. And I was going to say. So yeah, he kidnaps her and he's going to hold her for uh, for ransom because he thinks that she's this one girl, and when he finds out that she isn't, he kills her. I mean, he could have he could have like driven her somewhere and just let her go, or whatever. But no, he kills her and then feeds her to his dogs. And at that one, when and when Rorschach sees that, or when Kovac sees that, and he's like, you know, first off, the, the crime itself was was just you know despicable, it was inhumane. Mm-hmm. But then to do that and then just walk away and pretend like it's nothing, like, oh well. <laughs> my bad dude my bad you know and he's like no this Shit is happens. It, this is not the kind of things like this guy has to pay and he has you know he he you can't just let this go and right, you can't just right. let him go and you can't just arrest him and throw him in prison or you know arrest him and you know give him the chance to you know be you know found not guilty on some kind of technicality this guy has to be removed mm-hmm. and he's like and and Kovacs is like, you know, when he says mother, I think that's the, the, the thing there where he says, you know, it's like at his heart, just like and you. This is a this is textbook, you know, uh, psychology is that no matter what. And, and I have to say, unfortunately, I've witnessed this, not me, per, not me, like I said, my, my individual, like I've been this person, but I've witnessed this like, you know, directly, like, like, like head on, like. That no matter how horrible a parent will be to a child, and I'll say particularly a mother, mm-hmm. that child will continue to go back to them, mm-hmm. like expecting something different, expecting them to to protect them or give them or you know tell them that they love them or something, even though they've not done everything to show that they don't care about them. Yep. they yep. still will continue to go back. In this moment, after everything, he hasn't to where I know she hasn't seen or talked to his mother in years. Well, yeah, she's been dead for years at this point. And he says, mother, you know, it's like, like there's still that, that longing there, that yearning for a love from her. Mm-hmm. And then Rorschach's like, no, yeah, no, <laughs> no, that all that ends now. And Kovacs closes his eyes. Rorschach opens him like, here we are. Yep. And that's, that's it. It's, it's a whole new world. <laughs> <laughs> Dazzling place. I never knew. <laughs> Dark, 10.45, dark by then, dark as it gets. And uh, I like this scene in the book a lot more than in the movie. Of course. Because uh, they, like, it's extreme in the movie, but they really had to tone it down in the movie. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, this piece of shit comes home. <laughs> you know, what's interesting is if you go back to the uh, the first couple panels, mm-hmm. when, when, uh, when, when, uh, I'll be, when Kovacs enters and he's looking around, you look at his coat. Yeah. And then when you go to uh, page 24 and you look at his coat, so his coat is all ripped up now from where he fought the dogs. Yep. And like the, uh, the, the. Spattered with blood stains. I was, I was going to say the, uh, the shoulder where the, uh, it's, um, it's buttoned down the little. Yeah. I don't know what those things are, but the way it's buttoned down, like those are ripped up. He's like, it's frayed. It's got the blood on it. And at that point, like it. I don't think he ever he ever like cleaned his coat again after that. No, because that's his backup coat. When he goes back to the apartment after they break him out of prison, and he says, "I have to get my extra clothes and my spare face." Mm-hmm. When he pulls that up, that's the blood stained coat, because you can see here, see the spatters and the oh, shoulder yeah. thing. Yep. So that's he he ditched that coat after that incident and wore the other coat the rest of the story. But the police confiscated that, so he had to get his backup face in that coat back. You know what's interesting in this scene here? Yeah, you can is, see the blood spatters there when he's getting it out of the floorboards. Yep, yep. And that's been years. Mm-hmm. It has been years. Just been under those floorboards all that time. And this is um, 
And at this point, this is when he stopped being, stopped working with Dan too. Mm -hmm. But he, when he pours the gasoline around, he's got the guy handcuffed there or kerosene, he pours it around there. Like, it's, it, I don't, I don't want to laugh, but it's kind of funny because when he sets that, when he like uh, strikes that match and then drops it, that kerosene is all over the place. That guy is on fire at that moment. Oh, yeah. And he's trying to saw through that chain while he is burning. Like, he was never, even if he tried to saw yeah. through his arm, he was never going to get out of there. Like, you know, if he were just like a purse snatcher or some shit like that, it'd be like, oh, that's too far. But it's like, he fucking killed a kid. Yeah. And I guarantee that he didn't just kill her. Because, like, when Rorschach's looking for evidence, he finds her little teddy bear underwear in the furnace. I think that indicates that this fucker took things a little bit of a different place before he killed her and fed her to the dogs. Like, I, I feel not a speck of empathy for this guy. I'm so glad Rorschach set him on fire. <laughs> so, this scene here, and a lot of people will associate this with uh, Saw, mm -hmm. but this is actually from um, Road Warrior. Huh. When the one car... Uh, uh, the one, the, the, the bad guys, um, or, you know, the war, the, I don't know what they, what their names were, but the one guy, his car turns upside down and, uh, and Max comes over to him and he sees them in the, and the, 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 um, the, uh, gasoline is leaking out and he like captures some of it and he handcuffs the guy to the car and he's trapped there. And then, um, and then he lights it and he just walks away and the, you know, so it's actually from, uh, from Road Warrior. <laughs> nice. Yeah, I, I never, I never put it in with Saw, which I'm, I'm not a fan of the Saw franchise. I never watched them or anything. But yeah, I've got the first one. I still haven't watched it. And it's got yeah, Carrie Elwes in it, so I mean, yeah, I, think I would. But yeah, Carrie Elwes is awesome, and Danny but, Glover. But yeah, I just, I, I love that scene just because you know, you think about any other superhero, they wouldn't have taken it that far, mm -hmm. and like Batman would have beaten the shit out of the guy, and he would have beaten him good, but then he would have taken him to prison, right? And like. Rorschach doesn't even entertain that notion. He handcuffs him, he pours the kerosene out, hands him the saw, and says, yeah, shouldn't bother trying to saw through the handcuffs, she will never make it in time. He just drops the fucking match. There's there's no conversation about it, there's no, like, oh, well, I'm gonna have to explain to you why what you did is wrong. It's just like, no, you have to die, and you have to die slowly and painfully. Which is why I prefer this scene over what happens in the movie. Because in the movie... He just chops the guy's head over and over and over with the cleaver. Right, and it's and, over the top and it's brutal, but it's like he's dead on the first chop. But they, and they use the uh, they use the dialogue from when he um, from when he hits the, kills the dog. Mm -hmm. They use that as the dialogue. Like you know, I can feel the vibrations in my arm. That's yeah, when he kills yeah. the dogs, not the guy. But the hot blood <laughs> spattering against my chest. Yeah. There's a line like that, which is where it splattered on the coat. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Shock of impact ran along my arm. Jet of warmth splattered on chest like hot faucet. But I love that this, he says, um, you know, watch for an hour. Like, did you really need to watch that building burn for an hour? <laughs> no. After the first 15 minutes, you knew that guy. Because even if he did come out, he would have been so burned up, it wouldn't have mattered. But yep. he sat there and watched for an hour, watched that place just burn down. Um, so that's, uh, yeah, like, I mean, just that's, I mean, like, yeah, like, so, a crime that heinous, that person needed to die slowly and that uh, I think I think death by fire is probably just about the slowest way that could happen. Uh, and then um, blood stain on chest like a map of a violent new continent. <laughs> I was I was looking at that. I was gonna say <laughs> he says here um, like his this parting words to the doctor after all that, and the doctor is just left just just completely just shaken. Like um, and well, I would say this about the doctor when we keep talking about it, like he was completely unprepared for any of this stuff, and he lives in this world where. Like, you know, he's completely, he's untouched by this. When they show the, the dinner party, the, the, the dinner that he's having with the other couple, he lives in this like high rise apartment with this beautiful cityscape, like, like, um, mm -hmm. like view from the, the, the window or balcony. Um, uh, so like, this guy, he's, he's untouched by that. You know, it's, um, it's, so it's like, they, yes, those things go on, but he's so far above it. Um, both, you know, Figuratively and literally, mm -hmm. uh, but uh, Rorschach says here in his final words to him, you know, existence is random, has no pattern save what we imagine after staring at it for too long. No meeting save what we choose to impose. This rudderless world is not shaped by uh, vague metaphysical forces. It is not God who kills the children, not fate that butchers them or destiny that feeds them to the dogs. It's us, only us. Streets stank of fire, 
the void uh, breathed hard on my heart, turning its illusions to ice, shattering them. Was reborn then, free to scrawl own design on this morally blank world. Was Rorschach. Does that answer your questions, Doctor? And it's like, you know, all this time we've been walking around, they thinking that there's an order to the world, there's a pattern. It's like, there's not. It's all just random. Mm-hmm. And you know, the only pattern that, 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 that is there is what we impose. And we basically impose a pattern that we've adopted from everybody else. Right, you know? right. And and I'm not going to. It's like I see this for what it is, and I'm gonna I'm gonna create my own pattern. I'm not gonna create a pattern at all. Mm-hmm. I'm just gonna move. Yep. You know. And and I love that line in the first panel. I felt cleansed, felt dark planet turn under my feet, and knew what cats know that makes them scream like babies in the night. <laughs> God, that's good. Alan Moore is such a fucking good writer. <laughs> He's so good. Looked at the sky through the smoke, heavy with human fat, and God was not there. The cold, suffocating dark goes on forever, and we are alone. Yeah, it's it's brutal stuff. Um, and then the doctor says, uh, I mean, he has a conversation with his wife, and he goes, Why do we argue? Life's so fragile. A successful virus clinging to a speck of mud, suspended in endless nothingness. So now, just like you said, he's starting to talk like Rorschach. Mm-hmm. You know? Next week, I'd be putting her into a garbage sack, placing her outside for collection. I sat on the bed. I looked at the Rorschach blot. I tried to pretend it looked like a uh, spreading tree. Shadows pulled beneath it, but it didn't. It looked more like a dead cat I once found. The fat, glistening grubs writhing blindly, squirming over each other, frantically tunneling away from the light. But even that is avoiding the real horror. The horror is this. In the end, it's simply a picture of empty, meaningless blank, uh, blackness. We are alone. There is nothing else. And it's so I like that part there was like, yeah, I, I look at this lot and I, I want to say that it's something else. But really what I see is this cat. But actually yep. it has no meaning at all. Mm-hmm. It's, it's again, it's, it's the only meaning that I give it. Yep. And what I choose to ascribe to it is this. Yeah, it's just the meaning you impose on it. And we haven't talked about these quotes that come at the end of every chapter, but I think we kind of have to with this one, which is from Nietzsche. From Nietzsche. Battle not with monsters, lest ye become a monster. And if you gaze into the abyss, the abyss gazes also into you. Yeah, which, which is... is <laughs> I, was, I was say, I mean, that's often quoted, and it's, it's beautiful. I think people always say, don't do that. But this is also the guy that coined the term Superman. You know, mm-hmm. there's a man, the Superman's like yeah. Nietzsche. Um, and then he's the guy who said the god is dead, and then he died. So, you know. <laughs> so, it happens. You can't bat a thousand, but hey. <laughs> Um, it's, uh, Rorschach is such a, such a complex character. There's so much to him. Mm -hmm. But in the end, even when he says all this stuff about it's, it's meaningless, it's a void, it's blank, there's no pattern to it. He chooses to still make a pattern Mm -hmm. that is for what's right. And I think it's because he says he, he knows that there is no quote unquote pattern. Um, and that we're all just random, but that doesn't mean that everything has to be horrible. Right, they, they, right. That we, it's like it just because it's random doesn't mean that we have to live in a chaotic uh, a chaotic world. Right. So you know there are people that are that are working within that self imposed pattern mm-hmm. to make things better. But it's a uh, what's that uh, in the Simpsons Halloween episode um, the the Shannon yeah and there's there's the hedge maze and. Uh, and then Bart comes through with a chainsaw and just cuts a hole straight through. Yep. Like all the things is like, hey, I found an easier route. That's Rorschach. He's like, yep. you guys are working within the maze. And I'm just like, there you go. <laughs> I found an easier way to cut through all this to get from point A to point B. <laughs> yep. Yep. I mean, it's it's hard stuff to read. Like, like Rorschach stuff is really hard to look at because it's just like, oh, damn. You uh, you and I played Siphon Filter like um, head to head a couple times, didn't we? I think so. Yeah. Do you remember that one that one map? It's in a park, but you can climb on top of the benches. It's it's this big labyrinth thing, like yeah, uh, like park. And what do we do? Do we actually stay on the ground most of the time? No, no. we climb on top of the hedges and we run jump from hedge <laughs> to hedge to get that advantage. Yeah. And it's like it's like we're not playing within within the, the, the boundaries. We're doing whatever we need to do to get the advantage. And that's Rorschach. He's like, yeah, you guys are sitting there running around, you know, on the ground. It's like, but. No one says you have to. Right. You say you have to. And I say otherwise. <laughs> yeah, because he makes it clear from the very beginning he's above all of that. He's He is like way up on the freaking moon looking down on everything. So then we get the big figure. Yes. And the, and the prison break. Which is hilarious because 
Rorschach was getting out. Dan and Lori didn't have to go in there. Yeah. <laughs> like, they, they find him, and he's standing in the hallway, and he's just like, oh, hey, guys, be right back. <laughs> so good. No, that is fantastic. I love that. Uh, and, and the thing is, like, he, he set about making his own escape, even though he didn't realize what he was doing. Mm-hmm. You know, it's, it's because the riot happens, and that's when, that's what puts everything in motion for him to escape. And, um, and, uh, and, and, you know, he was at the escape. But what I think is interesting here is there's a guard standing outside Rorschach's, um, cell. Mm-hmm. And, uh, and all of a sudden, big figure and his guys come up there, and he's like, uh, hey, what do you guys want? Hey, look, this is a solitary wing. You're not supposed to be here. If anybody sees, we could all get in trouble. It's like, hey, come on, give me a break. And he goes, how's the wife, uh, Marnie? Mul- Mularney? And he goes, what? Hey, he's like, listen, she's got nothing to do with this. He goes, you have a kid. You still have a kid, right? And he's like, yeah. And, he, and, and this guy they intimidates him, and, you know, and he walks away so they can have their time at Rorschach. Rorschach, the big criminal, the, the guy that, oh, we got to bring him down. He's so evil. Mm-hmm. He's not done any of that at right. all. He hasn't threatened us. He just sits there quietly in his cell, doesn't do anything, doesn't intimidate or attack the cops, nothing. And it's like, this is the guy that you put in here, right? And it's like, tell me, what would you have rather him done? At this moment right here, this guy knows about your family. is basically very subtly threatening you yep. and them. Don't you kind of wish... Maybe, maybe, you know, <laughs> at that moment, you'd be like, you know, maybe we, uh, maybe we, we put the wrong guy in, in prison. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> God, every, everything about his interactions with big figures, great. <laughs> Tall order. <laughs> <laughs> Your hands, my perspective. God, I love that line. Because <laughs> that's, that's Rorschach's interaction with everybody. No matter who he's dealing with, it's, you know. I, I've got a part of you, and I've got my perspective. I'm going to force it into what I want to have happen. <laughs> okay, so the prison break. Just a touch on this real quick. I know we're going we're going way over again. Yeah, we're an hour fifteen in, so we have now been at this for two hours between the two episodes. Is when they show up, Rorschach turns his back to them. He won't even look at them. Yep. Starts taking off his shirt, and then just talking, and then. Uh, you know, he says all that stuff, and the guy reaches the bars, and he grabs and he goes, "Your, you know, your hands, my perspective." Grabs and breaks his fingers, ties them together, um, and then they can't get free. And then he stands back and just watches. And it's like, whatever happens at this point here, this has nothing to do with me. Yep. I have not done anything here except for you tried to attack me. I broke your fingers. I tied you up. Yep. Now he knows what they're gonna do, but. That's your choice. Yeah, yeah. That's you doing that. This no matter no matter what else you know has happened before, you're deciding to make that choice to kill this guy to get to me. Mm-hmm. Um, You'll notice his blood splatters in the same spot that the dog blood spattered on him. Oh yeah, nice, very nice touch. Um, uh, so it's uh, and I I like that because even the he's 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 still the same Rorschach you've seen before, mm-hmm. and um, and he doesn't do anything different and it is like you guys are being criminals yep this is what you do i have not done anything to provoke you um you came down here after me and this is just you being what you are yep and even then like so what's great about this is the only person he kills is big figure yep he 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 incapacitates the one guy and then they kill him yep then they go where they break in there to him, and all he does is break the toilet and they stand on top of the bed. <laughs> Again, you're the one pursuing him. You're coming after him. Yes, obviously, with the with the water rushing in, that's you know, you're gonna get electrocuted, but you're the one coming after me. Yep. You electrocuted yourself. You know, I broke the toilet, sure, but you're the one that did that. Yeah, so, so you made the choice to walk in here with water flooding in, so Right. Your fault, so, dumbass. Right. <laughs> and so Rorschach, even his escape. At that point, he's he's escaped. Oh yeah, he's out of the cell. Right. He kills Big Figure because obviously the guy needs to die. Uh, but uh, and I'm sure the cop was quite happy with that too. But <laughs> I mean, like he, he he protected himself when the guy tried to shiv him. Yep. Right. That's that you know that that's uh, 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 what's the word I'm looking for? Self defense. Yes, Sam. Thank you. Self defense. And then these other two guys kill themselves. He does nothing to that. And then he goes and he kills Big Figure. That's it. Yeah. And I, I think that's great. 
<laughs> Excuse me, have to visit Min's room. <laughs> <laughs> you just see the blood trickling out. Of the, the yeah. It's so good. I love that. <laughs> so yeah, we've talked we've talked in uh, the Night Owl episode about uh, about his V1 Dan. How he's like, you're a good friend. I'm sorry, I make it difficult. Um, I guess because we we do kind of need to land the plane here, and this has been a super long episode on top of it being a two parter. Well, we knew it was going to be long because oh, yeah. Rorschach. Oh you know? yeah, yeah. There's so much to cover with Rorschach. Honor is like the hawk. Sometimes it must go hooded. <laughs> um. I love the fact that there's no point where he stops trying to attack Adrian after they get to the... <laughs> like, Adrian has him every step of the way. He sees Rorschach's reflection as he's sneaking up on him, and he, like, stabs his the fork through his sleeve and pins him to the table and just knocks the shit out of him. And then he just flings his dinner tray at Dan and incapacitates him. It's like, just two shots and they're both down. Right. And then every, but every time he gets an opportunity, he goes out and immediately. Yep, yep. So Adrian's going over this whole big thing about, oh, here's why I am the way I am. And you see Rorschach just trying to get the fork out of the table. <laughs> and then he does. And he sneaks up behind him and he tries to stab him with the fork. And Vite blocks it. And he twists his mask around. <laughs> and he punches the shit out of him again. <laughs> and it's just like over and over and over this entire issue is he just knocks Rorschach down and he gets back up. He ain't ever going to keep him down. <laughs> um... And it's, it's so good that, like, there's absolutely no point where Rorschach's like, I'm just going to hear him out. It's like, no, he needs to fucking die, and I'm going to be the one to do it. <laughs> uh, it's, uh, it's, it's, so, it's so great. He's, he is a wonderful, wonderful character. He's a terrible person, but he's a wonderful character. Uh, so, we're we closing. Um, well, we got to talk about Rorschach's final thing, of course. Yeah, and that's what uh, I was going to mention earlier, and I was like, you know what, I'm going to save it. Um, because uh, it's the last, uh, last, it's page 23 and 24, and then there's all the finishing stuff. So, there was a, um, I think I told you about this once, it was a, a story in Heavy Metal. Um, and I, I wish I could find the issue, because I don't remember it fully, but basically this guy was tracking this woman... And in this society, in like this like post-apocalyptic world, whatever it was, um, they, they, there was no place for like anybody that was def this uh, deformed or disfigured. Mm -hmm. And she was in some way like that. And so he was chasing, tracking her down. He's chasing her down to kill her. And um, it's a long track. And I think they were, he was like going through the snow to get at, go after her. Um, hold on. Yep. <clears throat> Sorry. Um, and um, he finally like catches up to her, and there's a bit of a struggle. And I think she hit him in the head with a rock or something. Mm -hmm. And uh, he gets her, and then he kills her. And then he looks, and he sees that you know he's been hit in the head, and he's got like this uh, this cut, yeah. And he's gonna have a scar, and so he kills himself because yep. you know he he can't go back. <laughs> and it makes me think of um, of that scene. I know you haven't watched uh, Serenity yet, right? Right. Um, but it makes me think of that scene of Serenity where Chiwetel Ejiofor was he's so, I just got, he's so fucking badass in that. That part, you know, we had a bit of a conversation last night about Joss Whedon, but mm -hmm. he, that character is so well written. That movie is so well written. Um, but that character is so well written as he's talking about, talking to, um, to, um, Mal about, uh, like what the, um, uh, what he does and like the uh I forget the the corporation federation I forget what the what the, the name of the those people are they're trying to control the the universe galaxy yep. and um it's like they just want to make it better for everyone it's like so you can they say so you can live in this perfect world he goes there's no place for me in that world now he goes I'm a monster right and it's right, like right. and it's so great where he's like he knows that I'm helping to make the world a better place not for me but for everyone else and to do it I have to go outside these 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 means these boundaries here and i can never live in that world right right because because i'm helping to shape the world into what it needs to be with you know, the universe and what it needs to be there's no place for me in it um and i and i think that's that's it's kind of cool um so like the, the so but when i think about that uh when i think about the end of watchmen 
it makes me think about that. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, so, yeah. So what were you going to say? Um, well, I mean, not not uh, too much about it, just that, you know, the the whole thing is, and we've talked about it with all the other episodes, they're, they're left with no choice but to just let Vite win it. Right. But Rorschach's not willing to do that. Uh, and it's funny because, uh, you know, they're, they're, when you say they're, they're just going to let him win, they actually don't have a choice because mm-hmm. by the time they get there, he's like, what do you mean? This is already done. Yeah. Like, it's, it's over. I've already done this. You can't stop me now if you wanted to. And even when Dr. Manhattan shows up, he's like, okay, but again, it's already done. Mm-hmm. The, the plan is so far in motion now. You only have two choices. But honestly, you only have one choice. Right, right. You know? But yeah, I, I do think it's interesting. Um, of course, Rorschach takes the mask off. Mm-hmm. But what you can see here is um, with the word balloons, when he's wearing the Rorschach mask, he always has those really rough word balloons. Right. Because he's got, like, the fucked up voice. Yeah, it's all muffled and stuff. Yeah, so he's saying, you know, you must protect Vite's uh, new utopia. One more body amongst foundations makes little difference. So what are you waiting for? Do it. But then, in the last panel before Manhattan blows him up, it's a normal word balloon, as he says, do it. So he dies as Kovacs. He dies, and he's crying, too. The mm-hmm. first time we've really seen Kovacs show any kind of emotion yep. whatsoever. Yep. And he's, he, he dies as Kovacs. Yep. As Kovacs showing emotion, he, he embraces... He finally embraces who he is at the very last. So... And it's heartbreaking, but uh, Rorschach... Needs to die, <laughs> really, to 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 make Vite's world work. He can't be there. <laughs> so, and that's what I was getting to with my 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 prelude, so to, of sorts, <laughs> is that for for Vite's plan to work, and as far as we know, I mean, Vite's plan worked. Vite looks and goes, "I did it." And he was like, "I did it." And he's he's so happy. He's like, "I did it. I we were on the verge of nuclear war. I saved us all. Mm-hmm. I did it." Peace talks have immediately begun. Right. I did it. I've saved the world. And at this point, you know what we're going into. We should be going into is a is a bit of a utopia. Mm-hmm. And what we see afterwards is it kind of looks like there is kind of a utopia because the new frontiersman has run out of things to say. They like to to, to print. We don't have anything to really print. Right. Because you know right. they were they were just kind of like like political like conspiracy like tabloid kind of like newspaper. I think a lot of the new frontiersmen, the way I think of Alex Jones, uh, I would agree with that. Where it's like mm-hmm. they. Like, they probably make some pretty good accusations against the government, and there's obviously, like, some shit like the Bohemian Grove stuff, but then it's also Alex Jones, so for everything like that you see, you have ten stories like, ah, chemicals in the water, turn the friggin' frogs gay! <laughs> it's like, okay, sure, bud. <laughs> so when we see, um, when we see, like, New York afterwards, it's fairly clean. Mm-hmm. Um, there aren't a lot of people on the street, but then, of course, there are you know, millions of people died. Right. Um, <laughs> There's no graffiti, you know, there's, and you don't see like not tops. You don't see any of that stuff. Though you feel that it's, um, that, yeah, um, that it's, uh, that it's, it, like, you know, like the crime and all that kind of stuff, it's gone. Mm-hmm. Um, and so I, I bring all this up to say that when Rorschach says, you know, like people must be told, you know, vice secret, blah, 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 it's like, if you do that though, you know, the world is going to end. You know, it's going to end. Mm-hmm. And, and you've been telling people the world is, is you know, the, the end is near, but not because you want it to be near. You're warning them to say, you know, kind of change your ways if you can and, and all that kind of stuff. Yeah. So, uh, but, but you don't want the world to end any more than anybody else does. Right. Um, yeah. So why would you then go through the point of trying to undo it, saying, okay, people have to be told. Right. People have to know what Vite's done, you know? He has to be punished, which of course is going to put us back on track to war. I mean, as soon as as soon as that comes out and invites American, mm-hmm. so you know, as soon as it comes out, that's that's going to be it. I mean, missiles are probably going to fly. Oh yeah. <clears throat> so why would you do that? It's interesting because in his psychiatric notes, um, when he's a kid, he writes the essay about how his dad. All he knows about his dad is that his name was Charles, and he left. And um, he says. Uh, I like President Truman the way Dad would have wanted me to. He dropped the atom bomb on Japan and saved millions of lives because if he hadn't of, then there would have been a lot more war than there was, and more people would have been killed. I think it was a good thing to drop the atomic bomb on Japan. So, so, or for, so a guy like that, 
saying that what Byte did was wrong mm-hmm. and people need to be told, they, 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 they conflict. Yeah. Well, that was also Kovacs saying that, not Rorschach. Right. But it, it was the, the whole, this whole sense of, of I guess, um, order and justice, you mm-hmm. know, and, you oh, know. Black and white morality, yeah. So, <clears throat> so where I'm getting with all this is that when we look at the world after Vite, after the incident, mm-hmm. there's no place in that world for Rorschach. Oh, not at all. No. He has no purpose. And that's all he lives for is... Because we see he doesn't, he doesn't have any other... He has no other interests, no other hobbies. All he does is go out and protect. He watches during the day. He protects at night. Mm-hmm. So in this new world, there's no place for Rorschach. What's he going to do? And he knows there's no place for him. That's why he makes Manhattan kill him. Yep. He says, I'm going to go do this. I'm going to undo everything. He doesn't want to undo everything. Right. He makes Manhattan kill him because he goes, I don't have... And if he just said, you know, kill me, kill me. I don't have a place in this new world. He wouldn't do it. Right, right. And he's like, but he knows he doesn't have a place there. He doesn't, he doesn't exist in that world. And he's grateful in a sense. When we look at him, him crying and he's like, do it. You could say that those are not... He's not crying because, you know, because he's going to kill him and, like, and justice will never be served. It's like, he's crying. It's like, this is it. Mm-hmm. Like this is the end of everything. Yeah, like, this is the end of my fight. Finally, right? Do it, and he sets him free. Mm-hmm. And that's why he died as Kovacs. Now, is that what Moore intended? I don't know, but it's right there, man. The problem is, I feel like Moore is that, and I think we've talked about this before. Moore is that guy that you really can't ask what he intended, because then he'd be like, "Well, it's bloody obvious, isn't it, you wanker?" It's like, great, okay, <laughs> sorry to have bothered you. But, uh, and, and I know we've definitely talked about this before, the very last line in the book is, I leave it entirely in your hands. Right. So, I think that pretty much any question that you don't feel was answered, it's entirely in your hands. You've got you've to figure out for yourself if that's what Moore intended. Yeah, it's 2022. Yeah, Alan Moore, I'm sorry, it's 2022, 1258. Alan Moore's punching me in the face. I feel I kind of deserved it. It's 2022, 1250. I'm talking to Alan Moore about the end of Watchmen. He calls me a bloody American wanker and says I'm stupid. It's 2022, 1257. I tell him I enjoy the League of Extraordinary Gentlemen movie. (laughs) Uh, So that was Rorschach, man. That was... That's that was a long one. We're an hour and a half into this episode, plus the forty five minutes from before. <laughs> so I I have to say that I think it's interesting that for a book that you could probably sit down and read in three hours, mm-hmm. that there's so much behind all the characters that to have a discussion takes you like three times as long as yeah. it took you, or I'm sorry, even more than that, like ten times as long as it took you to read the book. Yeah, yeah. To have a discussion about the characters. Yeah, it's crazy. It is, uh, man, yeah. Watchmen always has been in, like, my top ten graphic novels. Just, like, this this shaped history, man. It, yeah, it did. Um, and I think you can, in some ways, you could kind of compare Rorschach to V. Mm-hmm. Two men on a path of vengeance, both that hide their face behind a mask, a mask of no emotion. Right. Um and that's where the similarities end. Yeah, yeah. V is very fl- flamboyant. You know, he's very theatrical. <laughs> and he lives. Yeah. And Rorschach doesn't. Can't, but, can't say the world on an empty stomach. Yeah. And, and Rorschach, and, and Rorschach is the, is the opposite of that, um, in the sense where it's like, I mean, he, they, they have the same, the same kind of like idea of like saving, you know, completing a mission freeing people saved in the world kind of thing mm-hmm. but he's like his his whole who he is like he has he separates like himself like he as where v lives the world he loves the world and and like this is everything about like he embodies everything about the world that he wants it to be mm-hmm. Rorschach does not do that he he just he takes it and he's like um like I can't, I, I guess I can't live in the world and save the world at the same time. Right, right. Um, yeah, he thinks humanity's a virus. Yeah, and 
it's uh, it's kind of interesting. Like I said, to for both of them written by Alan Moore, both of them having some similar some similar traits, and uh, but yet at the same time being so drastically different. It's it's kind of interesting. Yeah. Um, and and they both kind of almost have a similar almost almost a similar background too, mm-hmm. as far as you know, like kind of what what made them who they are. Right. Right. Um, and then they're both very very devoted to you know to the um to their plan yeah that that's that's really interesting it is yeah v is very much about the uh like the idea of freedom and and liberty because this whole thing is you know you can kill me but you can't kill an idea right and so you know it, i think rorschach kind of represents like the ugly side of anarchy and v represents like the idealistic side of anarchy and i, I love how he how v shapes Evie mm-hmm. to to be not not to be like him but to I guess kind of be free um and you know though he he he's like to understand who I am like they both have this understanding moment where with with Rorschach is with the doctor and with V it's with Evie mm-hmm. and him him like kidnapping her locking her up and also and putting yep. her through all this stuff and he's like you know like I didn't do this to torture you I wanted you to understand you know, like who I am and mm-hmm. everything you went through is exactly what I went through. And the hope that you felt, you know, with yeah. those notes is like, that's the same hope that I felt yeah. that, the, that there was, there was love out there. There was goodness out there. There was kindness mm-hmm. and there was more than what I was, what I was being shown here. And there could be more out there. And, or to, uh, or to phrase it the way of another insane anarchist it's only when we've lost everything that we're free to do everything <laughs> so. and, and i love how when you know it's like it, you say you know that you can't kill an idea and mm-hmm. even rorschach obviously at the end of watchman it's almost like that you can't kill this you know this yeah. idea but when evie says uh he's like we want to do this she's like um you know it's like no thing. i think i'd rather you know go die behind the chemical shed you know yes. it's like yeah and, just take me behind the chemical shed and shoot me <laughs> and, and she like, tiny soccer that bitch yeah. <laughs> and, and rorschach is, is in a sense like very similar in this whole thing where it's like you know no no i um uh, like there's good and there's bad and you know and for me i i'll die you know doing what i what is in my uh, in my understanding is good yeah. Than, than to say that it's not. Yeah, I'm I'm gonna see if I can pull up Alan Moore's song, uh, Mr. A, which is his tribute to Steve Ditko. It might be in my book. Uh, it might be. Um, because I I actually had the song on, uh, on my MP3 player. Okay. Um, we may we may just need to play the uh play the video where he recites it, but uh. Alan Moore had a band called the Emperors of Ice Cream. They actually have some pretty cool songs. They have one uh, called uh, Monster Island. They have one called Fires I Wish I've Seen. Oh, wow. Uh, it's a really cool song, that one. And what happens if you play these songs backwards? I've never tried. Uh, it'll probably summon that snake god that Moore likes so much. Yeah, we'll just play the video. It's only like a minute and a half, and then that can be our little wind-up. Because this is, you know... You play is... it. It's not the song itself. It's just him reciting it. Right. This is from the. Uh, with, uh, a local band that... So um, this is actually from the documentary Finding Steve Ditko. Okay. Really good documentary. Okay. It's on YouTube. Put together about ten, fifteen years ago now, called The Emperor's of Ice Cream. We had this song called Mr. I. Um, it was a the, the main chorus was a shameless ripoff of Sister Ray by the Velvet Underground. Um, but the verses, I, I thought they were, they were quite memorable. Would you like me to give you oh, a, would we? a performance, Come Jonathan? On, have this. this is gold. <laughs> he had one room above a thrift store. He had a trunk of books by Ayn Rand. He was short-sighted and reclusive, resisting pleas to take his photograph. He drew a superhero comic. He saw the world in terms of black and white. He said a day's work for a day's pay. That is our one and only right. 
he takes a card and shades one half of it in dark so he can demonstrate to you just what he means. He says there's black and there is white and there is wrong and there is right and there is nothing, nothing in between. That's what Mr. Allen said. So yeah, I, the song itself is very cool. I like it a lot. I like that. The, the, yeah, even though I don't subscribe to that particular philosophy, like Ayn Rand thing, but yeah, the like idea of like I take, a, about Rand. <laughs> I take a I take a card and I shade one side of it black and say there's black and there's white. And there's that. If you turn the card on its side, there's nothing in it. That's that's it's, pretty. That's pretty clever. Yeah, I love. Uh, that's one thing I love about Mister A. Like I said, it's it's a bit extreme, and you know the Ditko's later works were very preachy like that. But uh, but yeah, I, I just love the concept of Mister A just because of that whole business card thing, and he just has the card that's like pure black and pure white. Uh, so, that's that's kind of cool. Yeah, yeah, but it applies to Rorschach, and it's, you know, and obviously Alan Moore is nowhere near the vicinity of an objectivist. He's not at all. And really, Rorschach was kind of a criticism of Ditko's worldview, but um, but I do kind of like that that's a song, and that, that, that verse there is super cool. Yeah. Uh, actually, while you were doing all that, <clears throat> I pulled up that on YouTube, and uh, I was able to... Um, to, to reverse it so if you play that song backwards um yeah it does have a message to us i'm just going to play it backwards right now all right rap morrison eats baby goats <laughs> fuck you rap morrison that, that, that's that's <laughs> I don't know. I don't really know anything about this 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 supposed feud between two of them. I don't know why I keep like, <laughs> keep egging it on. I don't know. I love it. <laughs> I'm like running over to like to Grant Morrison, like slap my hand, and run around more. It's, it's from Grant. <laughs> like <laughs> I don't know why I'm doing that. I have, <laughs> I have no wizard in this fight. Yeah, yeah, that was the same documentary where uh, Alan Moore talked a lot about uh, some of the bullshit that Stanley pulled on Ditko and stuff, and he would talk about how. Uh, he also talked about, like, Kirby, and he would say, like, you know, Kirby really ultimately scripted the books, it's just that Stanley would kind of edit the dialogue because it was clunky. Because, mm -hmm. you know, if you read any of Kirby's, like, DC books, it was really clunky, you know, it's yeah. very clumsily written. Um, I love them. Like, The Demon is one of my favorite, uh, comic series from Kirby. But, uh, it is, like, it's not, it doesn't have that same flow as the Marvel stuff, but if you look at the pencils, and, like, we've both seen original Kirby pencil pages, not in person, but, like, scans of yeah. them, he, he writes, like, the gist of what he wants the dialogue to say, and it'll be like, oh, you know, this isn't a good idea, and then, you know, Stan Lee would just basically pepper it up to be like, ah, oh, come on, stretch, this isn't gonna, whatever, yeah, it's <laughs> like, he, he would do his Stan Lee thing, but... But yeah, like there, that is a very, very good documentary, and that does kind of give you some insight onto Rorschach ultimately as a character, because Rorschach is a criticism of Ditko's objectivist tendencies. Uh, wow, this was uh, this was pretty in depth. Um, this was, yeah. There's, there's like I said, there's so much. There was so much to talk about Rorschach, and and I think we really kind of. Um, kind of brought it all home there for a guy who's he's really i mean he's just a complex character and i think mm -hmm. anybody like that it does what he does they have to be complex yeah, they can't be yeah. they can't be one note they can't be they you can't even be like you know well you know this happened so that kind of flipped their switch like no it, that's not enough you know you have there has to be more they have to be a very complex character even to where they struggle within themselves you mm -hmm. know and it's uh it's he, he's cool it, just and he's cool in in everything about him, how he's written, as you said, as a character, you know, as a as a as a a, a figure, a in the in the, the that world, he's not that cool, <laughs> but <laughs> as a character in all the depth and dimensions that he has, and he's pretty cool. Yeah, yeah. Hmm. So yeah, so I've been a Comey. Yeah, my name is Turk182. And uh there's black and there's white. And there's a Comey and there's Turk. <laughs> That's not where I was going with that. <laughs> Sorry. Okay. Side by was... side on my piano, <laughs> keyboard, oh lord, why can't we? Ebony <laughs> and ivory. No, 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 no. She'd be like, I am dark and you are light. <laughs> you are blind as a bat and I have... <laughs> 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 so for those of you completely lost, um, it, probably the best way to find it is uh, Best of Eddie Murphy, Saturday Night Live, 
It's uh, Joe Piscopo uh, doing Frank Sinatra and Eddie Murphy doing Stevie Wonder. And um, <laughs> and the whole premise of it is he wants to do a black and white song like Paul McCartney and uh, and Michael Jackson. And then um, uh, Stevie Wonder had done a song, too. Um, I, I think. And uh, anyway, so he wants to do one. And those were the <laughs> those are the lyrics. So, um, oh, it was good. It was good. But yeah, no, I was going to say, you know, there's there's wrong and there's right. And you know, the right thing is to spread this podcast around to everybody All right. and say nothing but good things about us. And the wrong thing is to be an asshole and say that these guys suck. Yeah. And yeah. if you do that, I'll find you. I'll drop you down a fucking elevator shaft. So. And he'll do it, too. This I've is a s- promise. It's not a threat. It's a promise. I've seen him do it before. Yeah. I mean, and, you know, um, you may, you may like, wow, that really got dark, like, real quick at the end there. It's like, <laughs> you know, it's like, yeah, well, I mean, there's nothing funny about it. Yeah. The comedian's right. dead. Last thing you'll, you'll hear from me is me say mother, and then I'll drop you. <laughs> <laughs> Bye, everybody. <laughs> All right there, folks, that was Our Moms Think We're Funny. Let's, uh, let's give them a hand.